All right, so now that the path tracing update for Doom of the Dark Ages has come out, we're going to be testing the RTX 5070 Ti against the RX 9070 XT and see how well it compares with and without path tracing on and with different levels of upscaling using FSR and DLSS. So starting off, it's going to be 1080p. Let's get this going. Uh, it's going to be native, path tracing off, and Ultimate Nightmare settings. And as you see, native performance, the 970 XT is being 5070 Ti. Uh, not by a great deal, but by a fair amount. We have an average FPS so far starting out, uh, 148 versus 133 for the 5070 Ti and the 1% low at 134 for the 970 XT versus 118 for the 5070 Ti. So you are getting a little bit better performance performance natively out of the 970 XT, but the 5070 Ti is still, you know, performing fairly well. So moving on, we are going to go turn path tracing on and see how well it works uh, natively with path tracing on. And right off the bat, you see things have flipped. We are now going from the, the 970 XT performing fairly a little bit better than the 5070 Ti to it not performing very well with path tracing on. We are only averaging 41 FPS, whereas the 5070 Ti is getting 54 FPS. So there is a substantial difference there. And on top of it, I find the um, 970 XT doesn't perform as well with the 0.1% low. It's dipping quite a bit down to 21 FPS, whereas the 5070 Ti is at 36. So you are going to end up with a little bit smoother gameplay uh, with the 5070 Ti over the 970 XT with path tracing on. So we're still at 1080p, and now we're going to move on to, um, to upscaling. So we're going to go with the quality preset for both. So DLSS quality and FSR quality. Um, one thing I would like to point out is I believe DLSS 4 is available um, on Doom the Dark Ages, whereas um, FSR 4 is not available. It's only FSR 3.1. So there being DLSS 4 available versus um, not having FSR 4, that is gonna impact performance a little bit, but to what extent, who knows? Anyways, moving on with the quality preset, we, again, the 5070 Ti is taking the lead. So we have an average of 70 FPS on the 970 XT, whereas with the 5070 Ti, we're seeing an average of 89. So that's quite a big jump. And with the 1% lows, we're at 59.60 for the 5070 Ti. And again, that's almost 20 FPS higher at uh, 78 FPS for the 5070 Ti. So with path tracing, with DLSS upscaling, the 5070 Ti is getting better results and it's got a higher um, like 1% low. So it just means you're gonna have a little bit smoother gameplay um, using a 5070 Ti with path tracing on. So we're gonna move on and we're gonna turn performance mode on for upscaling. And again, same as what we saw before, the 5070 Ti is performing better than the 9070 XT. So starting off, we're seeing an average of 94, 95 FPS on the 970 XT. And with the 5070 Ti, we are getting about 122 FPS average, which is a fair amount better than the 970 XT. And then the 1% low, we're at 66 with the 970 XT. And we're still in the triple digits with, uh, well, I kind of dipped down here going inside, but we're still seeing a much higher 1% low with the 5070 Ti at 92 FPS. Inside, the performance does uh, hurt a little bit more on both GPUs, but. So now we're moving on to 1440p. We are going to be using native and aliasing, path tracing off, Ultra Nightmare. And the same as at 1080p, the 970 XT performs a little bit better than the 5070 Ti natively with no path tracing on. 
So we're getting an average FPS of 103 for the 9070 XT and 89 for the 5070 Ti. With the 1% low being 88 and 0.1% low being 81 versus 1% low of 76 and a 0.1% low of 68 in the 5070 Ti. So moving in a bit, things are dipping down a little bit, uh, but we're still seeing the 970 XT outperform the 5070 Ti. Now let's see how well it goes with Path Tracing turned on. And in this case, both cards are struggling uh, at 1440p. Um, unfortunately, the 9070XT at this point, uh, it crashed on me. Uh, adrenaline crashed, couldn't play the game uh, with native patch tracing at 1440p. It was just too demanding. But as you can see, the 5070Ti can still manage to play it. Uh, not very high, but we are getting an average FPS of 33 with a 0.1% low of 26. So he can do it. So turning upscaling on to quality, the 970 XT can handle this with quality uh, settings, but you do have to use upscaling for it. We are getting an average of 46 FPS with the 5070 or the 970 XT, and the 5070 Ti is getting 60 FPS. So we're back to we are seeing before, where the 5070 Ti just performs better with uh, pad tracing on and with upscaling. And overall, the 1% lows and 0.1% lows as a ratio of the average FPS is much better with the 5070 Ti versus the 970 XT. We're dipping down to 23 FPS and uh, let me pause it here. So we're dipping down to 1% low of 23 FPS and 0.1% low of 16 with the 970 XT. So it is struggling more, uh, especially at that lower FPS than the 5070 Ti, which is a 1% low of 46 and a 0.1% low of 43. So overall, in this case, the 5070 Ti is performing substantially better. Even indoors, seeing the current FPS dipping to the low 30s, uh, and 5070 Ti is still at the 50s. So we're gonna go and turn performance on for upscaling. And again, we're seeing 5070 Ti perform better than the 970 XT. So the 970 XT here is averaging around 67 FPS, but we're starting to see, so the 1% low isn't that much lower, it'll probably start to drop, but it's at 54, but that 0.1% low is down to 34 FPS, which is less than half the average. Whereas when you look at the 5070 Ti, we're averaging 84 FPS. The point or the one percent low is just a little bit down below that at seventy five, and the point one percent low is at sixty nine. So it is like you know eighty percent of the FPS, whereas on the ninety seventy XT we're seeing it at about fifty percent of the FPS at the point one percent low. Then moving in here, we are still seeing the FPS drop. So we're down into the mid fifties versus with the fifty seventy Ti, we're kind of seeing the same overall uh, FPS at eighty seven eighty four. And now moving on to ultra performance. Now we're seeing the 970 XT almost hit 100 FPS. We're in the mid 90s, whereas the 5070 Ti is almost hitting 120 FPS, with the 0.1% low almost being in the triple digits at 97 FPS. Whereas on the 970 XT, again, the 0.1% low is at 58, which is substantially lower than the average FPS. So you see it by the frame time graph. There's a number of spikes that we're not seeing on the 5070 Ti. So the 5070 Ti. Um, also, maybe AMD is going to come out with an update for the driver software, but uh, NVIDIA did come out with an update, so that's probably one of the reasons why the 5070 Ti performs so much better in this game with patch tracing on. So moving on to 4K, where neither of these GPUs are going to do overly well. So we have patch tracing off, and uh, it's at native resolution. So again, 
the 50 or the 97 the XT is performing better than the 5070 Ti. Not by much. We have an average of 55 versus 47 with the 0.1% low at 33 versus 35. So even at native, that 5070 Ti 1.1% low is doing better than the 97 the XT. And then moving inside, uh, we're seeing a little bit of a dip in performance, but um, it's not that great compared to being outside. The 5070 Ti, even though it has an overall lower average FPS, is still able to maintain a higher 0.1% low than the 970 XT. So even though the 970 XT has a higher average FPS, you're going to end up with a smoother gameplay with the 5070 Ti just because those 0.1% lows are higher relative to the average FPS. So turning path tracing on the at native resolution, the 970 XT just crashed in the, in the settings menu. Uh, still able to go through with it on a 5070 Ti, but regardless if AMD crashed or not, you can't play uh, the 5070 Ti at 4K with path tracing on. You're going to get 3, 4 FPS. So I don't think that's very surprising that we're getting horrible performance uh, with path tracing on at that level. So now we're going to go and turn upscaling on to quality. And again, the uh, 970 XT crashed on me. Uh, a just too demanding. Um, the performance is just too demanding at this level. Uh, we were getting 20 FPS, but still that's not enough. Whereas the 5070 Ti, again, I think this might go down to, boil down to NVIDIA coming out with the driver to support path tracing. AMD has not yet come out with the driver, so it'll be interesting to see how well it performs when or if they do come out with some kind of driver for it. But the 5070 Ti, we're getting 33 FPS. Uh, for the average, we have a 1% low of 26 and a 0.1% low of 25. So uh, the 0.1% low is still like 75% of the average FPS. So even though you're seeing some pretty big spikes on the frame time graph, it is relatively smooth considering the kind of FPS we're getting, which is pretty low. So let's move on to ultra performance because this is the only way you're going to get a halfway decent FPS um, at 4K. And we're seeing the 970 XT get around an average of 75 FPS with the 970 XT getting 63 FPS. So the 5070 Ti is doing better. And like I've been seeing before, like those 1% lows and 0.1% lows, the 5070 Ti is doing much better. It's got a 1% low of 65, which is only a little bit lower than the average FPS. And the 0.1% low, uh, low is only slightly below the 1% low. Whereas looking at the 970 XT, we have an average of 58. The 1% low is roughly 20 FPS lower than that. And then the 0.1% low is at 33, which is kind of around just a little bit more than half the FPS of the average. Whereas if we look at the 970 XT, the 0.1% low is, you know, it's like 70% of the average FPS. But overall, if you're looking to play this game natively, the 970 XT beats the 5070 Ti pretty easily, uh, but not by much. But if you're looking to game with patch racing on or using upscaling, the 5070 Ti is the way to go. It just has better path tracing and um, upscaling support. Again, this can change in the future if there's support for FSR 4 for the 970 XT. And if they come out with a patch, um, a driver patch to help support path tracing uh, for AMD GPUs, which NVIDIA came out with a driver level uh, update for their GPUs along with the patch tracing update that came along for the game. But right now, me personally, I don't see patch tracing being worth the impact performance. Um, maybe down the road it will be um, same kind with ray tracing. Ray tracing has gotten better over time, so it's not as big of an impact because it, it uh, adds better support within the GPU. But right now, path tracing is just way too demanding that personally I will not be using it. 